Good morning, Cyber Friends. This is Mitty Man coming back at you from Walker's Music with yet another word for the day. Uh, we give God all the grace. We give Him all the honor. As a matter of fact, when we receive His grace, in other words, we give Him all the praise for life, health, and strength for as well as it is. And we're also giving a shout out to the YouTube fam from Baby Justice all the way up to Big Papa JT. Where's Mama JT? Y'all know what time it is. To the end time harvest game, brother LA from Kingdom Knowledge, Elder Michael McCree. Alexis 777, Lady D, this is Kate, Linda Leonard, everyone, brother and Papa JT, brother Orange Flavor, PB Drawings, brother Hyde and Cliff, uh, hadn't seen brother Hyde and Cliff now in a good while, haven't heard anything from him. Guess it's about time you check and see what's going on. But at any rate, I just want to say to, to the game, to the entire harvest game, that uh, I am going to uh, be trying out another uh, communication hub that uh, I was uh, led to by a little brother, by a little brother Marcus, music man. He found this application, and I want to give him credit. He is the one that found this application, and then I went and checked it out, and I got it, and downloaded it and everything and it seemed matter of fact me and Lady D have tried it out and uh I think me and Lady D the only ones have tried it out thus far and it works very very well and I'm quite sure Lady D will attest to this fact. Middle man coming to you this morning with the key. The key to rest and peace in your life. People Let's make let's let set the record straight. The middle man has in no wise attained it yet. But he's walking toward the mark of the of the high calling in Christ. But I just want to share a testimony that I know, in other words, true. And uh if it worked for me, it'll work for you. Uh the key to rest and peace in life. Now let, let, remember that I said I have not attained but I'm reaching. First of all I've decided a long time ago that I would let God's word be the final authority. Now let me tell you what I mean by that. Does that mean that I cross every T and dot every I? No. Because it's not me that does the work. Anyhow. But is that I decided that regardless to where I find myself at in a situation in life that I would let God's word be the final authority on whether I was doing it or not. In other words, a lot of times uh, uh, we feel that just because of the fact that we can find all faults in everybody else but we can't see it in our own self and we blind ourselves to that fact that everybody's wrong but us. No, I decided that a long time ago that I was going to let God's word be the final authority. Now, another thing is, once I saw that it was not my word, and neither my strength nor my power that we're going to be able to do anything, let me, let me give you all a wake-up call. If you are trying to do this thing in your strength, forget it. You're not going to be able to do it, and you're never going to have any rest and you're never going to have any peace because you're going to always be, you're going to always fall short if you're working in your own strength. Jesus said, he that follow him must deny himself daily, take up his cross, and follow him. And there's a lot of other instances that I could make mention of that would prove that fact that if we're going to follow Christ, we must and have, it's an imperative that we die to self. Because you don't, you'll never be able to do it. And like I said, still it's not you. It is his strength that does it. Now, I want to share a testimony with everyone. For many years, I, after I got out of high school, I never had any problem with alcohol until I got out of high school. And I went to senior college. And that's when I began to indulge in alcoholic beverages and, you know, just, just indulge in myself, even though I knew, had knowledge, that I shouldn't have been doing that. Because I was reared up in the church, knowing what was right and wrong, going to Sunday school and all of that. But nevertheless, I still rebelled. 
and I indulged in strong drink. A lot of it, real quick and in a hurry. But now let me back back a little bit beyond before that. Before that time, I indulged in <clears throat> in the experimentation with smoking cigarettes and stuff, and I had been doing that a long time before I even started to indulge in drinking. I started experimenting with cigarettes at a very, very early age. I think I was around about maybe 10 or 11 years old, started trying to experiment with them, and eventually ended up as a regular smoker. And I smoked for many, many, many years, up until 2007, I was, I was smoking cigarettes. And God delivered me from the alcohol, but I had to make the decision. I had to get tired of it myself. And then God came and did what I couldn't do for myself, and that is to take that habit away. I didn't go through no three-step program. I just... I, I told the Lord I was tired and I wanted to quit, but I couldn't. But if he would help me, I would never touch another drop. And that was in 1996, people. Did I do it? No. I rested. It was his word. Well, 1996, I felt that the alcohol would be... I mean, I didn't, I didn't drink that long, but nevertheless, I drank a whole lot. And, the, and I felt the Lord just took that away. That was easy. But now when it came to the cigarettes, I had been doing that much longer. And I felt, this is me the man, I felt that the cigarette, quitting smoking would be a great, a great task. It would be harder because I had been doing that for like almost 40 years. So I just knew, oh wow, I was going to have a big struggle with that. But nevertheless, I did the same thing with the cigarette as I did with alcohol. I took it to God. Lord, I can't do it on my own strength, but I know you can. But I thought, even though I said that, I just knew that it was going to take a whole lot more for the smoking than it did the drinking. People, let me tell you something. It was easier to do that. God showed me that that was more easy than, than, than the drinking. Even though I had been smoking many, many more years than I was drinking, but that is going to show you the power of God. When you, we must use our free will and our choice that God gave us as humans. He gave us our free will. Yes, he did. But the ability and the power to break these demonic forces, we don't have that power, people. And as long as you're trying to do something yourself, you're never going to do it. And you're going to stay frustrated. So the key to, like I said, Quitting smoking was easier than the drinking, even though I thought it was going to be harder. But I had more grace to quit that than I did the drinking. It was just like that. And that was in 2007. So no longer God removed the alcohol. God removed the, the desire to smoke cigarettes. Just like that. People, it was God. Not me. Now, oh... But I still have other things that need fixing. You see, that just it. We are always going to have to rely on God. That's the way he designed it. We will never be to the place where we are independent from God. No, no, no. That's never going to work. So the key, and I'm going to end the video. Don't want to make it too long. But the key to rest and peace to everybody is to know this one thing. You cannot do nothing. Stop trying. Now, I'm not saying just go lay down and just do everything you can because you cannot do it. No, no, I'm not talking about that. Faith without work is dead. But what I'm saying is live your life. Let Jesus lead you. The Word of God is our roadmap. Let Jesus lead you. Don't worry about it. You know, everybody's not going to endorse you. Everybody's not going to like it. They, and let me give you a, let me give you a, a let, me, let me let you in on something. Everybody didn't like Jesus. So now if they didn't like Jesus, you surely something that they're not gonna like us. It's not about that. But the key to rest and peace in your life is when you decide that and you look at the word of God and it tell you plain as day, read John. In the Gospel of John, around the tenth chapter, I believe, somewhere along in there. But it read what it says. Jesus said, Without me, ye can do nothing. 
So the rest and the peace that we can have in our lives, when we see our lives with things in it that may not be right, we may not be happy about it, but there's nothing you can do about it, give it to God. Rest in the Lord. Give it to Him. He can deal with it. And don't, but as long as you're struggling with something, as long as you got your hands on it, guess what? God's not going to touch it because we are imperfect. This is the one key that I found out a long time ago. As long as many man hands is on something, God's not going to touch it. But if you get your hands off of it and really give it to Him, He'll fix it. And that is the key to rest and peace. Knowing people that there's nothing that really that you can do except what? Rely, totally lean and depend on Him. Point blank. So with that being said, many man hope that this helps somebody. I don't know who it will, but I know after I found out about that 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 main factor in my life that I was not never gonna be able to do anything, I got the rest and the peace that I needed. Now do it do I have do other things? Yes, other things are still there. Still trying to deal with it. But I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the Lord deal with it. I'm not gonna I'm not telling you to use grace for the, for an occasion of sin. No, 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 no. That's not what it's for. People, grace is God's power to help you do the thing that you could not do normally. That's what God's grace is. He gives us a grace. But we must totally wait on the Lord. That's what. Wait and lean on Him. With that being said, this midman said, whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God is not in it, remember to come on out of it. It's not going to last. Don't worry about it. It's going to come to nothing if God is not in it. That being said, there's many men saying peace and goodbye.